Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this podcast, I'm going to talk about population modeling. We're going to start by talking about what a population is. And before we can do that, let's talk about what an individual is. And so let's say this is an oak tree. Well, you probably know that an oak tree starts life as an acorn. So that acorn will germinate. A little tree grows out of that. Eventually, it's going to produce pollen and make more seeds, and eventually we're going to have more acorns. And so since we're talking about populations, a population is a group of organisms living in the same place at the same time. So let's say this is a group of oak trees that are living together. And so since we're talking about population life cycles, it's easiest to start with humans. And so you know a little bit about humans. You know that we start as adults. We're going to produce sex cells, and those sex cells are eventually going to fertilize one another, and that's going to create babies. And so let's use biology terms. And so that's going to be adults creating gametes. Those gametes are then fertilizing eggs and those are making what are called zygotes. And then finally we have juveniles. And this is a cycle. So let's put that in a cycle. And so adults are producing gametes, which produce zygotes, which produce juveniles, which produce more adults again. And so if we were to just generalize for all of life, we have adults producing gametes, those produce zygotes, juveniles, and then it goes again, over and over and over again. So this is the life cycle, and we could apply this to humans or oak trees or oysters or squirrels, whatever. Um, they're going to go through a life cycle. And so since we're talking about a population, remember a population, if we look at all the genes in that population, we call that a gene pool. And that gene pool should remain unchanged through time unless we violate one of these five rules of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. In other words, we have to have a population that's big enough. We have to have random mating. We have to have no mutations, um, no gene flow, and then uh, no selection. And if we do that, it will remain the same. And so basically, I want you to ask you a quick question. And so if we have this uh, life cycle for all of life, the size of this life cycle is going to be related to the large population. But what I'd like you to do is pause the video and think for a moment, where would you put random mating? Would you put it here? Would you put it here? Would you put it here or here? And likewise for mutations, gene flow, and selection. So I'm going to stop for a second. That's good. And then I'm going to show you where they should go. So if we start with random mating, that would actually go here between the gametes and the zygotes. If we're talking about mutations, where are most mutations going to occur? That's going to be between the adults and the formation of the gametes. If we talk about gene flow, remember that's immigration and emigration. That's going to go between the juveniles and the adults. And then if we talk about selection, most of that's going to occur between the zygote and the juveniles. And so again, if we can keep all five of these the same, in other words, no mutations, random mating, no selection, no gene flow, the population should remain the same as long as we have a large enough population. And so basically in this podcast what we're going to do is we're going to play around with modeling of a population. And especially we're going to focus on this large population size. And so we're going to be using a spreadsheet. And a spreadsheet is very important to biologists. And the reason why is that you can gather, well first of all we can gather a lot of data and we can put that into a spreadsheet and we can analyze the data. But we can also produce models, so mathematical models, and we can use those within our spreadsheet to do studies, to do experiments. And we don't have to do that uh, in the wild, and we don't have to take the time for animals to reproduce. And so we can generate a huge amount of data really, really quickly. And so we're going to be using this spreadsheet right here. Basically what happens is you're going to start with allele frequencies that you put in. Remember, that's going to be the frequency of one gene and another. In this case, we'll start with 0.5 and 0.5. We'll then use our spreadsheet to generate gametes. Those gametes are going to fertilize and form zygotes, and that's eventually going to make juveniles. And so we're going through this life cycle, but we're going to go through it using a spreadsheet. So I'm going to launch a spreadsheet program. So we're going to use numbers, um, but you could use Excel or Google Docs to do this. And I'll try to put a link to the spreadsheet that I'm using down below the video, and so you can try it on your own. And so let's start right here. So right up here, we're going to start with a population where the frequency is 0.5 and 0.5. And so this is, you can think of this almost like the gene pool. These are the adults. And let's say that that generation one, the frequency of those two genes is going to be the same. Next, they're going to produce gametes, zygotes, and juveniles. But let me show you how the spreadsheet is actually producing these gametes. So if I click right here on this gamete right here, it's kind of hard for you to see, but I'll zoom in. Basically, this is the equation of this cell. And when we're talking about spreadsheets and I talk about cells, basically 
Um, what is a cell? It's going to be one of these boxes in the spreadsheet. And so if you've ever played Battleship before, you know that this right here, this cell right up here, is going to be cell B1. You can read it off. Or this right here would be A5. And so if we go right here to C5 and we look what's in that cell, there is a equation. And so basically this formula, I should say, says if a random number is less than or equal to what's in B1, so B1 is going to be what's in this cell right here, display the gene A. But if it's not, then display the gene B. And so right now, think of a decimal between 0 and 1 and try to include two numbers in that. And so maybe you're thinking of 0.23. That's what I'm thinking of. And so let's say a random number is generated right here. Um, we'll say right here. So it's going to generate a random number. And we chose 0.23. And so is 0.23 less than what's in B1? And in this case, what's in B1 is going to be 0.5. And so since 0.23 is less than 0.5, then it's going to display the gene A. If it wasn't, let's say you chose 0.79, then it would display B. And so each of these cells right here has the same exact formula in it, but each of them are going to generate a different random number. And therefore, each of them are going to generate a different gene. Those genes will combine to form a zygote, and then we're going to compile the different types of zygotes that we have to eventually make the juveniles. And so in this case, we got a gene A from one gamete, a gene B from another one. So we have AB. So we could say that right here. And so that would be one of these seven ABs that we're going to have in the population. And so the neat thing about a spreadsheet is I can set the allele frequencies to 0.5 and 0.5. And now I can just click on this mate over here. And look what's happening to the data down below. It's basically doing generation after generation after generation. So each time I click this, it's going to make a brand new generation. Um, now you'll find that also if I could just hit enter on one, it'll make a new generation as well. And so the neat thing about that is we're gathering a huge amount of data. So we're modeling a huge amount of data. And so if we start with 0.5 and 0.5, let's look and see what happens to our gene frequencies at the end. If we look way down at the bottom, you'll see that in this mating that I just did, we're actually going to have a P and a Q value of 0.47 and 0.53. In other words, this one generation, this one turn through the life cycle, what's happened? Well, you can see right here that we've got a lot of those that are AB, a few that are AA, and a few that are BB. But the frequencies have changed. In other words, the frequencies of the gene pool that we had to start are different than the ones that we have at the end. And the reason why, since we're not doing mutations or selection, we're doing random mating, um, and then we're also doing no gene flow, basically the one thing that's causing this change is going to be small population size. And so this in science is called genetic drift. And so let's just do a quick experiment. So let's say I start with 0.5 and 0.5, and let's me do it, let me do a quick mating. And so I'm going to put my generation 1 right up here, 0.5 and 0.5. So let's say this is generation 1. Now let's do a quick mating. So I'm going to click on the mate, and it's going to do one quick mate. If we look down at the bottom, you'll see that the new P and Q values are 0.41 and 0.59. Well, let's put those in here and use that to set the next generation. In other words, let's use these juveniles to set the next generation. So I'm going to remember that. It's 0.41 and then 0.59. And so let's put those up here as well, 0.41 and 0.59. And now let's just do another mating and see what happens. So right now, the ch it has changed again to 0.44 and 0.56. And so um, if we put those values in here, so again, 0.44 and 0.56, we've got allele frequencies that are changing. And that's just due to chance. And so I'm going to speed up the video. And I'm going to gather the next, uh, looks like, five generations. And then we'll go look at the results. OK, so I just finished doing those matings. And you can see the allele frequencies have changed. And I've organized those on the next um, sheet of the spreadsheet so we can look at them. And so basically what happened was our P generation started to drop and our Q generation started to increase. And if we were to graph that, what have we seen? Well, we've seen an increase in the Q generation and a decrease in the P generation. Um, and so they started at 0.5 and 0.5, and then they've changed away from that equilibrium. And so what's causing that? 
Well, that's just randomness. That's just random change due to a small population size. And how small is our population size? It's just 15 individuals right here. And so what you could do is you could play around with this spreadsheet and you can vary different things. Uh, right here we're just looking at population size. Um, and then you can see the results. And so what we've created is a model to study populations. And we could make that model even more complex to add um, selection or we could add random mating. Um, and so that's kind of up to you. So again, I'll put a link to the spreadsheet at the bottom, and that is population modeling, and I hope that's helpful.